It's Monday and I'm in the office and I'm quite excited because I'm filming today and it feels like it's been a while. I've got the opportunity for quite an exciting video and so I thought let's do it. So I've shuffled my schedule around, made myself available and we're going over to film this job which I think should be interesting but we'll see when we get there. I've just got to grab a few materials here from the office and then I'm heading onto the road. It is just before 7am so uh, I'll see you over there. Okay this is what I need for the job. Full rest harness, suction cup, carabiners, optimizers, and a hard hat. So can you guess what I'm gonna be doing? So we're here at Nimbus Hosting. John and Luke are over there. I've got the ID3 here, and the first job is that we're gonna just check these Tesla chargers because apparently um, one of them is only it's not working with non-Teslas, apparently. So I'm just gonna plug in and see if it works, basically. Green, okay. We are charging at 11 kilowatts. Okay, so that one's fine. So what I'll do is click, stop charging. Now let's try this one. This one's charging as well. So it must be an issue with the particular vehicle that they're trying to charge rather than the actual <laughs> chargers. So that was an easy fix. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's see what, what the plan is with this. But John Luke here. This is the scaffold which I showed you guys on last week's uh, vlog. The customer has asked us to fit three more panels here. So we're gonna get, um, the panels are gonna be delivered later but the, we need to fit bird protection as well. Morning. Morning. So this is bird blocker, which we've never used before. Um, oh, they give you a little stroke portal in there, look. That's nice. Is that right? Yeah, isn't it? I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I bought a motorbike jacket. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there the should box. be one in there, there too as well. chunky in there, and I reckon it fell out of someone's pocket into the box. That's vile. <laughs> that feels like it's been there for years. Oh, really? <laughs> Is that a date, mate? Look, look at the date. <laughs> they just uh, chucked him out of the staff canteen. <laughs> That's actually our date. Uh, <laughs> so here we are up on the roof. And basically, what we've got here is these are all the panels that we fitted. And as you can see, there's actually space for three more along here. So the plan is put three more panels in just there, which will fit in nicely and just allow uh, a bit more output, you know. It's always hard when you plan these jobs to know exactly what the roof's gonna be like until you get up on, on there. <laughs> so uh, it's one of those, you know, 27 was good, but uh, 30 is even better. So the other issue that we've got on why I'm here is that the customers reported that I think over there somewhere uh, there is a panel that on the solar edge system is showing us black in other words it's not outputting anything so we're gonna actually go and have a look at that see if we can lift the panel and see if it's an issue with the panel itself or with the optimizer so that's kind of my job for the day and then these guys are going to be fitting the bird protection because as soon as we got up here panels on the next day the customer reported they could hear the pigeons hoo-hooing away so um, got to get that sorted out and this bird blocker stuff should do the trick I think the reason they've not had any issues with the existing panels is because they're slightly lower because of the way the mounting system is whereas ours are slightly higher and as you can see you could easily get a pigeon nestled under there quite quite cosy so we want to avoid that so we've got the winch and John is going to send up all the stuff. It's a safe way of doing it with the carabiners. And this um, is the bird blocker. So I think it goes like that and just clips on to the side basically and just stops them from going in. But it's going to be a bit of a kind of suck it and see type thing because we've never done this stuff before. These are the, the fixings. So they go on like that screwed down with some self tappers and they've got a rubber seal underneath so it just means that 
the um, the roof is still sealed when you screw these down like you can see that there how we've done that one so it'll just be a case of adding um, I mean we can use the existing bottom ones actually so it's only two four six basically along the top and then change those to mid clamps instead of end clamps shift the end clamps onto the outside and then everything will fit nicely like a, a sort of a jigsaw puzzle so should be fairly easy to add those three extra panels and then we just got a restring so it'll go up from that one to that one then across then down to that one then it goes along and under then it'll go up to that one and then it'll go to that one i think so that's what it looks like when it's when it's on Boom. Right guys, well I'm heading over now to a racking company who we're going to be looking into getting the new racking for John's van. Um, this place has, we're done here uh, at Nimbus Hosting until we can get the inverter now. We had a bit of a disaster, but I'll wait for you to see the main video about that. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're moving on to the next place now. So here we are, coming to visit Yoke Vans. Very exciting. Or is, would you prefer as that, it is, that end? No, because then the side door you come in to get your stuff yeah. off from the drawers there. But he was saying about having these instead. Is that a standard setup? You can have like that half and then this half. So we're here at Yoke Vans and this is a secret behind the scenes of how we secure a new sponsor. So we're looking for a new sponsor for our racking. We've been scouring the internet for the best racking systems. We went with the Sortimo stuff before. It is nice, but it's just so expensive. Uh, we've decided to change it up and try and find a brand that is quality, looks great, but also affordable because we want to share stuff with our audience that they can actually afford, you know. So here at Yoke Vans, that's what they do. They make wooden racking, but it's really nice, bespoke, high quality wooden racking. And we've been following them on Instagram for a while. They invited us here to have a look at what they can potentially do for John's van with a few to maybe us doing some potential promotion for them on Instagram and stuff. So. Yeah, quite exciting. And the first thing I can smell is wood. I love the smell of wood. Well, that was cool. Really interesting. Really nice, nice guys. Really interesting place. Good to see a factory where they make stuff out of wood. It's nice. So I think we're gonna get the racking done for John's van at that place and make a video about it or at least a few Instagram posts and things. So that's quite exciting. But anyway, I'm gonna hit the road now, head home and uh, <coughs> probably see you tomorrow it's Tuesday and I'm at home I've just done a workout another early start I smashed out a lot of office work last night as well I was literally sitting on the sofa just in the zone because we've got so behind on dealing with our incoming leads that we had about 50 leads in the like leads inbox that I just hadn't been dealt with for like over a week. So <clears throat> I just smashed through those, got everything up to date. So my head is a bit clearer now. All right guys, well, that is it. It's the end of another day and the office is empty now, but it has been quite full. We've had Dan here, Lee here, Wayne was here for a bit and uh, I've got a lot done today. It's been good. We had our admin team meeting and we, uh, we just wiped a load of stuff off of our task list and I've been getting all of our systems up to date so the Zoho templates for the emails that we send out to customers now are nearly all up to date which is great um, so that's a massive bit of progress and we're working on an automatic quoting system that people can go on in our website and get quotes sent and stuff uh, automatically to people based on the information that they give us so that's really exciting it's all happening it's really full-on and intense but we're getting a lot done which is good I'm gonna go home now enjoy the Sun for a little bit have a little GNT and I'll see you tomorrow and tomorrow we've got something special it's 4 45 a.m. I swear I'm getting up earlier and earlier these days but the reason I'm up so early is because we've got a training today with Chile Electrical for data. That is our, our training day for today. So as you guys probably know, once a month we have a training day where all the electricians are off the tools and they're getting some kind of training that will help them to increase their knowledge and become better electricians. Um, so normally it's the last Friday of the month, but this month we're doing it on the Wednesday because John's off on Friday and the theme is data. So that's really exciting. And we're gonna be filming it for internal use, but maybe you guys will get to see a few little clips as members. 
So I'll try and show you a little bit behind the scenes. Also, Hilti are coming to site to fit like a van gateways so that we can keep track of all the tools that are coming on and off the vans. So that's really good. So it's going to be a busy day today and that's why I'm up early because I need to spend a couple of hours just getting on top of the leads that have come in overnight and do a few other things before I get sucked into the training because I'm just going to be really trying to focus on that rather than beavering away on my computer. So I'm going to grab a coffee and then head to the office. So here I am at the office. I think this is probably the earliest I've ever been here, quarter past five in the morning. Um, so I have to be very disciplined when I'm in here because there's always a million things to do. So I have to basically make a mental list of what needs doing and then sort that into priority order so that I know what should be at the top of my list. And I know that today the priority really is for me to get all the content filmed that we need to film to keep Nathan busy because he's kind of, we're a little bit hand to mouth at the moment with the content. Nathan's got three and a half days a week to edit but if he's not got enough content, then he's kind of stuck, you know. Um, and I'm going away for two weeks as well next week. So I need to try and get a bit of a bank built up so that while I'm away, we've still got videos going out. And we've got a couple of videos that are nearly finished, but I need to shoot a couple of segments. So Nathan sent me like a whole script and shooting list. And I'm just going to print that out now. I'm going to read through it, get it in my head so that I'm clear with what me and Max need to shoot today. Um... But also something that I like to do daily, which I've not sh really showed you before, is just check our dashboard. So this is our dashboard and it basically shows us how we're doing um, as a business. So how many new deals have been created, how many leads have been coming in, um, how many quotes have been sent out and have, have been accepted and stuff like that. Um, so, <clears throat> and it's quite scary, the difference between this t year and last year. like in terms of leads coming in in terms of quotes going out and getting sent we're we're doing way less so the numbers look a little bit scary but actually it's because we're filtering people a lot better so like before we'd get so many junk leads coming from youtube um and so now we filter so we've put our prices on our website for example which stops people from contacting us if they can't really afford us um, and that way we just avoid lots of wasted admin time uh, but it's interesting to see like for example this uh, this month we've sent 28 quotes we've had 15 accepted so that's quite a good ratio for us that's like more than 50% uh, of quotes accepted which is really good um, but like in March for example March 2023 yeah we sent 101 quotes we had 55 accepted so that was a good month as well but April we sent 49 quotes we only had 20 accepted so I can see all the numbers here quickly and easily on the dashboard I can see how many payments we've received as well um, and I can just keep an eye on things and if there's any worrying numbers then I can dive into them and figure out what's going on and how can we fix it anyway gonna jump in now and uh, about eight o'clock the guys are all gonna start rocking up here Max is coming here at 7.30, so he's going to be filming a short uh, Tradeify uh, Instagram reel with me before all the guys get here. Then at 8 o'clock, everyone gets here. We're taking the three vans into the office, and we're all going to jump into the vans, drive into the office, get the Hilti on track uh, units fit, fitted, and do the data training. Right, well, I've got a lot done this morning. <laughs> it was worth starting early. It's 7.36, Max should be arriving at any moment, and when he does, I've just set everything up. So we're filming a Tradeify uh, Instagram reel this morning, and it's a bit of a jokey one, you know, we try and make them a bit funny. So it's about how nightmarish it is to do quotes without Tradeify, and then with Tradeify, it's simple, which it actually is. So um, I'm just setting my desk up ready to go, so as soon as he gets in here, we can just... Uh, smash that out. We've got a couple of little um, scripts to do for an, a couple of other videos that are coming up. I just try and print everything out and then I can kind of follow it and tick stuff off as we're done because I do find that I forget otherwise and then we miss stuff and it just holds Nathan up. So we want to get this shot this morning, get the footage uploaded so that when Nathan starts at like 1.30 he's got 
uh, plenty to crack on with. So the guys are here now. Max was late, so um, <laughs> you know he's he's got to do 15 press ups now. We we have this rule: one minute, f one press up for each minute that you're late. <laughs> um, but we're gonna do we're gonna shoot this tradeify skit. But as as uh, Lee and Luca here, I'm gonna get Luke to hold the camera, and then you can do a behind the scenes of what it's like when we try and to film this stuff. Click here, click the link here for um, a 14 day free trial, and if you love it, you can get your. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You Me recording Max recording recording Lee. Three months using our special code, right? <laughs> this is really heavy, this camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 now you know how Max. On the side. Now you know. Oh, look at that view. That's a good little view. Yeah. Uh, Watch it. That is heavy. Now you know why Max has such Max bad is... back. No, my back's got better. That is way it's heavier. Right, let's get a close up again, really. That's really. so funny. Ready? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay. I know the exact way you are acting, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that's the Why initial have you got so many laptops? close up. <laughs> because I've got like Chloe's old laptop, my old laptop, Julie's old laptop. <laughs> Look at those. Oh my goodness. John. Limited edition of surprise following, on this following, video. <laughs> following Corey's fashion statements. <laughs> Except Pokemon version. <laughs> you alright Ruben? Oh look at those. Nice trousers. Thank you. Yeah. What's, what brand, yeah, what yeah, brand are those? Yeah. Yeah. Fresh off the count. Yeah. Fresh off the count. <laughs> I get it, I get it. God, so aggressive. What am I in, M or D? What's M? So we're in John's new van. M's, um, don't scratch the ID3. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not driving, nothing's at risk of being scratched. Shut up. Radio station choice is good. 11A, banging one. Tomorrow we should have a delivery of Tim Tams from Jim, from the Burbs. Snap. Yeah, he sent about quite a few kilos of Tim Tams from, Oz, from Australia over to us. So uh, Jim, thank you once again. When they arrive, we will make sure we do an unboxing. Um, that'll be tomorrow. I, I hope anyway, that's what tracking says. I've got the Amex on me, mate. I'm going to the beer festival later. Come on, get out. Beer festival on the Amex, what? You heard it here first. Jordan just said beer festival. New, on the Dan's Amex. reinvented the company policy. Anything goes with the company Amex. Basically. So we're here with the guys from Chile doing a. Um, a data training. Hello, these, hello. These look very exciting. Oh, you've brought snacks as well. Look at that. Brownie points for that. Oh, we've even got some little bits of fiber in there, look. Very, very exciting. So, the day's nearly done. It's been fun. It's all been, uh, all been kicking off. We've had loads of, tried loads of different data cables. We've also had some cheeky croissants. So, um, some left, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. So, what do you reckon, guys? Useful day? Pretty good. Oh yeah, that guy knows his stuff, for sure. You'll see videos of John throwing in loads of network cables soon. Sorry, am I out? And I'll just watch. I'll, I'll be learning. No more, no more don't do data John anymore. I still don't do data as a rule, but... But you, now. you're willing to expand your horizons slightly. I think data John really rolls off the tongue. <laughs> it does, yeah. Yeah, it does. We could uh, <laughs> so many things, I'm getting pushed towards something down. Uh, <laughs> Wait, is it the office? Uh, yeah, left. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. am exhausted now, like, it's quite intense sitting, and it's weird isn't it, you're just sitting there, but it's quite like tiring just sitting all day listening and, and stuff. Yeah, it was very Especially interesting, when but sitting down it just makes me, I just oh. start snacking and then... Yeah, and then you, know, you get... Just bosh, like a quiche. Like afternoon get, fatigue. Bosh. Packet of crisps. Yeah. What else was in those packets of Malwams? It's Thursday and the day has got off to a bad start already. I was already sad because the Tesla is going back today. It's finally being picked up. So I'm gonna go and sit in and cry for a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> but then I got a text from John to say that his van won't start this morning and he's got a massive EICR to do today that's about an hour or so from his house. So that's thrown a spanner in the works, especially as it's the new van that we've got for him, which is supposed to be dropped off to get racked out today. So I'm a bit as a, at a loss as to what to do, but 
I've told him to just phone Ford assistance and hopefully they'll be able to figure it out. In other news, it's Harvey's first day, so I'm going to the office this morning to get him rolling and give him some training on his day-to-day -day role, which should be fun. It's kind of a relief, to be honest, because I've been basically covering most of the stuff that Chloe was doing, along with Dan doing the POs and Wayne filling in as much as he can as well. Um, so we're all going to heave a sigh of relief <laughs> once Harvey's kind of up and running and can cover a lot of those things because we're all feeling a little bit overworked. Um, but anyway, that is my morning so far. I've made myself a coffee. That's a positive at least. And I have done a workout this morning. I had a little bit of a lie in. Got up at half five. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I just need to head off to the office now. So I'll see you over there. There she is. Looking completely naked, ready to go to her new owner. Goodbye, old friend. It's been fun. <laughs> I'm gonna miss that lovely glass roof, the faux leather seats, and the 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. Don't know how I'm going to survive without you. Okay, so now the morning ritual is completed. I'm heading over to the office in the ID3, which is nearly as good, but half the price. No, sorry, it hurt me to say that. It's not nearly as good. It's not anywhere near as good, but it is half the price. Look at that. He's here early. I'm impressed. Right, little update for you guys. So, um, it's lunchtime. Harvey's been doing well cracking a load of stuff out been doing some training with him so that's been good um, I'm going now to see a storage unit that we have potentially secured just up the road from here we've got loads of leftover materials just starting to build up from solar jobs and things like that stuff we can use on the next jobs but we need to store them in between and the office is just getting a tip as you know but also we've got John's old van that we've got loads of stuff to empty out of we've got the old VW transporter electric which has got loads of stuff in that needs putting somewhere so we're gonna have to buy the bullet and have some storage space unfortunately until we can get a big unit so I'm going to have a look at that now um, in other news, I, I finally made it, guys. I, I made it to the front page of The Sun. <laughs> no, I, um, somebody messaged me on Instagram and said, oh, I can't believe you're in The Sun. And I was like, what? I, I thought they were pulling my leg, you know? And then I was like, what, what are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I was scrolling through my feed on my phone on The Sun, and an article came up with your face on it. And I was like, oh, I recognize that face. I thought, no, nah, come on, you've got to be kidding me. So I was like, well, if you're serious, send me a link. They sent me a link. The Sun have written an article about me based on a video that I did in December 2021 where I divulged the company earnings. And I basically said, we turned over about 720,000 pounds. We've made a net profit of 180,000, which is true. Um, but that I didn't take much of that myself because I was building up a war chest to get us through hard times if we ever hit hard times and as you guys know the channel members you've seen the, um, the earnings video from last year where we barely made a profit at all turns out that war chest came in quite handy because we wouldn't have survived without it uh, it just enabled us to scrape through those hard months that we had and we're just about getting to the other side of it now we're still this month is a bit tight, next month should be a bit better. That's because the Libby delays. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, the, this article was a bit weird. It was like, the title was, I earn 180,000 pounds, but people don't think I've got a good job or something like that. And it, taught, it said that I was a dad, which is really weird because I'm not a dad. So they clearly just seen the YouTube video and were like, oh, this sounds interesting. Let's make an article about it. Um, so yeah, I thought that was funny. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess any publicity is good publicity, right? Anyway, heading over to see this unit. See you over there shortly. I'll try and take some footage if I can. Well, just like that, we have a storage unit. So um, that's good. A full 20 foot shipping container, fully insulated on a secured site with CCTV and plenty of locks. And we got 24 seven access. So that is awesome. And tomorrow, Lee, Luke, 
and Reuben are going to come in here and just uh, load it up with all the junk that we've got lying around and try and make a semblance of organisation out of it. So be one step closer to having a constantly tidy office and an organised stores where we can actually keep track of what we uh, what we have and hopefully get everything on the on track system to be able to monitor our stock levels. So an exciting moment. Jim, you know what it is. This, if I am correct, is two key three point seven kilos of Tim Tams from one of our, our YouTube members, our longest standing YouTube channel member, Jim from the burbs and he's been a channel member for 25 months and he is amazing oh yes look at that you absolute legend <laughs> so we now have it's so funny because he emailed me and he said oh now that Corey's left you've probably got a chance to actually get your hands on some of these before they all get scoffed so look at that <laughs> A whole box of Tim Tams. Oh, you've got to experience the Tim Tam goodness. The most amazing chocolates ever. Like, chocolate biscuits ever, and they come from Australia. Jim, thank you. You're an absolute legend. Right, so I'm about to have my coaching session now with Nick, my business coach. I have a session with him every two weeks. And um, it just helps me to focus on strategy, basically, because sometimes I get distracted <laughs> so he's good at helping me to refocus on the important things I've just done my 90 day plan for the business uh, updated that and we've got some basically some um, profit well not profit like sales targets that we set well it's the end of the day and um, it's been good I'm feeling rough I feel really rough I've got a sore throat I've been coughing quite a lot this afternoon so I hope it's not the dreaded Lurgy. I've not felt like this in a long time, so I'm gonna go home, um, get some food down me, and get an early night of thinking. Hope that I'll feel better tomorrow because I've got a lot to do tomorrow and some filming to do, and um, my last possible time with Harvey before I go away. So, yeah, typical, isn't it? Why do you get sick when you're about to go away? Is it like your body just starts to unwind and then you're like, ah? Oh and then you get sick. I don't know. Anyway, see you tomorrow, if I'm still alive. <sighs> right, update. Um, I got home and I realized I've left my phone at the office, my personal phone, uh, but I was feeling really rough. So I thought, let me just do a COVID test. And guess what? Flipping positive. So um, I've got COVID. There you go, there's the proof. Um, yep, two lines. So, <sighs> that sucks because I'm thinking, like, my brain's going wild now, you know. Thinking, okay, I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about me, I'll get through it or whatever, but I'm thinking I've been in the office with Harvey and Erica today and I was coughing a little bit. And then yesterday we were literally with, like, the whole team in that training, that data training, so it was, me, Wayne, Dan, Lee, Luke, Reuben, John, and the guys from Chile. And I'm like, ah, oh, wouldn't it be typical if everyone got COVID and had to have like a week off? Oh, how to destroy a company. Anyway, that's my brain going down the worst possible scenario, which I'm sure will not happen. Um, <clears throat> but now I've said it, it probably will. I'm going to drive back to the office now and just um, pick up my phone and then I'm just going to batten down the hatches for a few days. The trouble is we're supposed to be going to France to visit Lisa's dad on uh, Tuesday morning. It's now Thursday so that gives us one, two, three, four, like so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday gives me four days to kind of recover and get a negative test otherwise I'm not going to be able to go to France. Lisa's feeling a little bit headachy as well so I don't know if she's coming down with it or not but I thought COVID was kind of gone, you know, like, it's summer. It's so weird, it's so weird. But I just knew it, I could, you know, there's that feeling if you had COVID, you just know. Um, it's that 
there's something about it that you can just tell what it is. It feels the same. I had it, um, I don't know, a year and a half ago or something. Not been ill for ages since, yeah, since December in Thailand, and that was just a uh, food poisoning. So anyway, I'll stop rambling. I'm gonna go and get my phone, come back, snuggle up in bed, and um, try and get some sleep and rest it off, hopefully as quickly as possible.